well, hey, why don't we do a, a sake show? Do you know much about sake? <laughs> no, not no, really. neither do I, so do you know much about sake? <laughs> I think I can spell it. <laughs> Hello everyone, Jeff Eccles here with The Lonely Vine at a somewhat familiar location at Sean's house. He's graciously opened up the doors for us. And you may, may remember Jim here from the beer tasting last summer? Yeah, it was almost a year almost ago. Almost a year ago that we did that uh, very long <laughs> beer tasting. 30 minutes? <laughs> 30 minutes of beer goodness. <laughs> you know, I did a uh, show on an Italian wine probably a month or so ago. And as part of that show, um, I asked, you know, what were some wines that you wanted to see me try? And uh, Jim made a comment that he was interested in seeing uh, wines from Asia. Like, well, hey, why don't we do a, a sake show? Do you know much about sake? No, not no, really. neither do I. So do you know much about sake? <laughs> I think I can spell it. <laughs> so uh, you know, if you're hoping to learn anything today, I don't know what we're gonna try try to teach you, but we'll give it a shot. Old college try, right? There you go. Um, okay, so we have two sakes here. Jim picked them up. Um, and, you know, just we'll touch a little bit on what sake is. Um, and then we'll, before, we, before we taste them, that way it should get good and warm. Um, but sake is, is uh, made from rice. Um, it's really not wine, even though people call it rice wine. It's really not beer. Uh, it is fermented. Um, but what kind of sets it apart from every, every, you know, wine or beer is that it's kind of double fermented. It's not kind of, it is double fermented. Um, there's a mold, it's kaji, I think is why you pronounce it. And that's added to the, you know, they take the rice and they actually polish the rice kernels down to get to the heart of the rice, which is where uh, uh, the good stuff is. And uh, so they add a mold to it that breaks that down to sugar. And then the yeast that they add to it uh, ferments the alcohol. So it goes through a double process, fermentation process, to get to um, sake. Uh, shall we do this one first, I'm thinking? Yeah, let's do that one first. Let's do the drunken whale Wait, first. Was this the label that you were like, yeah, that looks really good? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this was the one he said, they have this label to sell it. Okay, got it. Um, so I'll try. You're not going to be able to see that for anything. Uh, but it looks like it's the suge. Sure. <laughs> so you get it. <laughs> um, it says the rice on this is the Ipan Mai, but I have never heard of that before, so I don't really know what that means. And uh, the rice remaining on it is 55%. And again, that goes to um, how much they take the rice and polish it down to get to the insides, and that's what they use uh, to make the sake. And, and generally speaking, the higher the uh, the how, how much they take off, the more they take off, the higher quality uh, the sake is going to be. Yes? Yeah. And how do they reduce the rice? Um, there's like this old guy sitting there. That, yeah, is he just like <laughs> some annoying? sandpaper and he just got a... <laughs> That's some Oompa Loompas, I think. That's a, as good an explanation <laughs> as any. Uh, I don't really know exactly how the process works. Do you, you, did you... Uh, you know, I... Th I and this is just from what I picked up from reading, because the internet doesn't lie to me. That's right. right. And, uh, but that it's kind of a, uh, almost like a gin mill, you know, cotton. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kind of separate, yeah. separate it out. Uh, it's, it's, it's a machine. I think they used a little rudimentary thing in the past, but now it's all, everything is hmm. Interesting. machine all right, cool. based. It's cool. Thanks, cotton. Sure. <laughs> it's a bold strategy. <laughs> we'll see if it pays off. <laughs> All right, so now we uh, also uh, do not have our sake glasses. So we are just going to be doing this with shooters. Yay. If this video gets to 30 minutes, I don't know what's possibly gonna happen. So I think I've touched on everything on here. How should we do this? Do we, do we wanna do the sniff? Sure, why not? See what's got some yeah. aromatics. I mean, sake generally is supposed to hit, be very um, aromatic. It actually smells pretty good. <clears throat> Um, I was reading another thing that where sake actually has um, like double the esters, the aromatic esters that wine does. So hopefully we're getting something out of this. What are you, are you guys getting anything? Just like nail polish remover. Yeah, it, it, definitely high alcohol on the front, but yeah. I got, I can 
It smells some almond in here. I yeah, think. definitely. Yeah, okay. Definitely get some almond in it. It does smell kind of just like an Asian restaurant. I don't, I can't <laughs> quite pin it down more than that, but it reminds me. It smells me. like MSG? Yeah, you know, maybe that's it. Some, uh, some flor- a little floral. It is a little bit floral. I definitely get that almond sense to it. Just a little bit of soy sauce kind of coming. A little soy sauce. I get a little new car. Some wildflower. Oh, good. I hope it tastes the way that it smells. It does smell really good, good, you know. And I and you know, generally when you get that hot sake, it doesn't really smell good. I mean, it just it smells like alcohol. Yeah, it does. Um, Yeah. You know, so this I I like the aromatics on it. I am. It is making me want to taste it. Yeah, so I agree. Let's uh, let's t- taste it up. Kampai. Kampai, yeah. Kampai. Uh, <laughs> So, Sean has actually never had sake before. So yeah, that I remember. And he was quite nervous going into this because most of the horror stories he heard about it. Um, so, what do you think? I, it's actually pretty good. Yeah. Um, I don't hate it. I can't really describe what it tastes like. It's a couple different sensations. It's kind of creamy, which I wasn't expecting. You know, I was expecting it to be really, really light, but the, it has some viscosity to it. It has some weight to it. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, you know, it's kind of a got a little melon flavor in it. A little melon. But the alcohol definitely burn comes through. And on the tail end. Yeah, it's little, a second or two after that's when you feel the alcohol. Yeah, a little bit more chill might take that away. But you know, sure. uh, this is fifteen to sixteen percent alcohol. Yeah. Uh, so you know, which is is which is right average for sake. So um, you know, a little bit more than you expect for wine. It's sweeter than I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. It's a uh, it's like a wave, you know. It starts on the tip of my tongue and then it, it ends at the back, you know. Just that sensation, just yep. that crashing. Sensation. I get some of that almond that you were saying on the nose too. I get a little bit out on the on the palate. Try some more. Sure. Let's go for round two on this. I'll keep it smaller, just to see if we can get a little bit more. Tastes warm. Which is weird, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's not warm, but it tastes warm. That's probably just the alcohol. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I can get um, like the, a little bit of a orange rind uh, thing to it. Melon rind is what I've got. Melon rind. Yeah. So, but you do it. What do you think of it? Do you like it overall? I would drink it. You did. I mean, I would drink it again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like it. It's uh, yeah, it's different and not bad. Cool. Um, yeah, I definitely, I definitely uh, like it too. Um, you know, drastically different than what you have come to expect out of most uh, Japanese restaurants with the really warm sake that's served. And you know, um, you're seeing more and more restaurants that are carrying larger quanti- larger variety of sakes and you're starting to see chilled sakes being served at the table in the restaurants you know so definitely be on the lookout for them because I mean this one um, I liked it it was pretty good yeah. yeah well I mean if you go to the Japanese restaurant or in the sushi place they're giving you what the craft for about four bucks the 200 milliliter craft this is 350 milliliters for about fifteen dollars so you would expect a little quite bit a bit difference, difference yeah, yeah. a little bit difference in quality. <laughs> Uh, so the next one we have is the uh, Rihaku, uh, the Wandering Poet. Uh, so now this one is uh, the grade is uh, Junmai Ginjo Sake, which is uh, considered to be you know the higher quality. And the rice on this is the Yamada Nishiki, which is considered mostly to be the highest grade or the best. I'm sorry, the best quality. Uh, sake rice for sake. There's uh, five or six different types of rice that can be used for it. This is generally considered to be the best uh, for sake. Uh, so yeah, let's get into this one. Oops. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> A little overpour there. What don't they say in Japanese culture that you should overpour it? I, is that it? Is yeah. that what you're supposed to do? They also have a ritualized suicide, so. (laughs) (laughs) 
You know, on this one, I'm smelling just alcohol content a lot more on this Are one. Are you? I, um, I get some more of those citrus notes. You get a little bit of a, um, like model airplane glue. Yeah. That's <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not getting much beyond that. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. You remember that all this? Okay, yeah, so you guys know that smell yes, I'm talking absolutely. about. Okay. And you know what you were saying earlier? I was I'm getting a little fingernail polish remover too. Yeah, just uh, this one a tiny bit, probably more than the last one even. I'm just not getting any smell past that. Not much. Get, yeah. Yeah, I, I like the nose on the first one better. Yeah, it was more way more aromatic. Okay, so let's uh, let's taste this one up. Way more mellow. Way more mellow and a lot more flavor, I think. I agree. There's a yeah. lot more going on. Uh, this one was, you know, had some good flavors to it, but this one really, it, it fills the mouth a lot better. It, it has a lot more going on to it. Longer finish. Um, I uh, get some citrus and some floral notes on that. And I get I I still get some almond like we got on the first one, uh, coming through on it. Any what do you, anything that you're noticing on it? I that, get the nutty. I can't oh, refine yeah. it to almond, but it's definitely nutty. Way more mellow. I don't feel like the wave crashing down, which is you know causing me to pucker up here and everything. No alcohol really on this one. No, I'm not getting that alcohol burn that I was getting on the first one. Yeah, um, I agree. Um, this one's pretty good. I still. You know, if you just let rice steam too long, that kind of musty kind of yeah, 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 rice yeah. smell. I've got that a lot in the taste, but not mm -hmm. so much the nose. Yeah, I'm definitely getting that almond on the second and third one. Uh, but it doesn't, it's not having that alcohol bite that the first mm -hmm. one had. It gets citrusy up front. Yeah. Citrus notes up front, and then it kind of transitions to the, the nutty or almond kind of thing. But then the finish isn't a spike in alcohol like I saw no. in the first one. Like nothing really. It's just a split second at the beginning and then there's no more. Mm -hmm. But good. I mean, so I, I like that one. You like that? The Wandering Poet better than the Drunken Whale? Yeah, I think that one is definitely my favorite. The other one smells way better, but this one's just more pleasant to drink. Yeah, absolutely. All right, that, 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 I couldn't agree more. Cool. And uh, I'm actually surprised <laughs> that we like this one because I said by the label, that probably they're marketing that because it's an inferior product. Right, so they're so, going, they put more into the marketing yeah. than they did to the product. So we have lower expectations for it, so maybe that's what, it, maybe that was kind of, but if I had compared it to, I would definitely choose the Wandering Poet over the uh, uh, Drunken Whale. Yeah, just, as, you know, for my all-around palate, I think that one just fits it a little more. It's definitely something that I would drink more casually. You know, that, excuse me, that's, that's kind of nice, you know, if you're having, if you're at a restaurant and maybe they're serving something that might be nice to cut through it, but if you're mm -hmm. just going to have some sake with some rice or just, you know, any other dish, I think that one's just more pleasant. Yeah. Yeah. Just more toned down and just more enjoyable for me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do. I actually, I think this one would pair better with food. Um, just because it is, you know, this one I think would overpower a lot of stuff that you would take because the, yeah. the flavors were pretty brash on it. Um, all right, cool. Good job, guys. Yeah, that was pretty right. good. Yeah. What do you think of sake? You think you'd, you'd, you're going to have it again now? Yeah, probably. Okay. It's not something that I'd just sit down at the house and you know, I have a glass of sake. Now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it definitely has its place, and uh, I'd be comfortable ordering it, and uh, hopefully it's similar. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. All right, cool. Good. All right, so I've given Sean the question of the show quite a few times now, I think. Uh-oh. Took him off, off, got him off his game. So now, you know, at the end of every show, I usually ask a question to the folks right. uh, that are watching, right. and then they come back to the comments, similar to how you got this show done. So yeah. you get to ask the question of the show to the eight people that are watching this video. I hope you're including the three of us. <laughs> yes, <laughs> including <laughs> twice. Well, my question to you is, what kind of food would you like to see as a pairing with the wine? So, for example. Uh, you pick the food, Jeff picks the wine, and you, you pair them together. And then do I have to make it? Oh, yeah, of course. It yeah, yeah, show? Yeah, yeah. Or you have to invite us over too. Yes. So, so it's more, it's going to be a cooking show. Yeah. Yeah, and no hamburger. It has to be 
you know, like a twenty dollar cut of steak or more. <laughs> right, just joking. No, it, it. What what food? You pick the food. See if Jeff can pair it, and Jeff's pretty good at doing that. And so I'd like to see that like on that. video. Jeff taking the the ingredient and using the wine to infuse it into a meal. Excellent. And I always like having guests on the show, so that works out too. So make sure you get some comments in there because this sounds like a fun one to do. Yeah. I, I haven't had a question of the show turned on me like this before, so so well played, <laughs> sir. Well played. Uh, I won't be asking him for a question of the show <laughs> again. So um, precedent. Which one do you guys want? This one. Yeah, one sure. or Because right. sure. you know it's not it's it's not right unless we're saying goodbye to everybody with some booze. Yep. All Sorry, right. drunken whale. Uh, so normally I would say until next time everybody cheers, uh, but this time I think we're gonna have to say kampai, which is uh, one I understand Japanese for. That's what they say at the yeah, restaurant. That's what they so. that's what they tell me to say at the restaurant, but that could just be trying to get me. Drunk, Everything so. I learned was from TV. <laughs> that's right. All right. So until every until next time everybody, come by. Come by.